This is going to be a very short video because in this video, we're going to use Datastax Langflow to chat with your PDFs, any PDF, right? And Langflow is pretty straightforward to use. So let's see, let's let the length of the video determine how easy it is to get started with Langflow. Um, so first things first, we need a PDF. So we're going to go to um, attention is all you need. I want to get this PDF here. Um, so we'll just go here, which is a pretty um, foundational paper in the world of machine learning and AI engineering. And so we're going to save that PDF. Now we go to Datastax Langflow and we read it, we upload it. So we go to data and I'm going to get a file. And this file I'm going to upload is attention is all you need. And this is going to upload, all right, it's uploaded. Now what do we do? Well, the way we do this is RAG. It's a technique we've made quite a few videos about. We'll put a link um, up here. But RAG stands for Retrieval Augmented Generation. You retrieve some data from a source that is relevant to you, some, some real-time authoritative context, and you use it to augment the output from an LLM through prompt engineering. Let's just look at this in Langflow. So um, if we come to Langflow, we have our retrieval. We, go, we get it from this file. And we've got, well, we need a prompt to inject it into, right? We need some stuff. We need, um, we need, notice how we get data here. We need to turn that into text. So we'll go get parse data just to turn data into text. And in Langflow, everything's color coded. So you can actually see that I give data here and I get text and I give text to the prompt. So the prompt will write, um, given this context from a PDF, we'll create a variable context, answer the question, and we'll give another variable question, just like that. All right, we'll check and save. And so now the, the context goes as text to the prompt, but we need a question. And for this, we have a chat input. So we'll go to chat input because you want to chat with your PDF, you know, and we'll just tie that to the question. Great. So we've created a prompt, but now we need to like get an answer. So we'll take a language model. And again, you can like work with anything. Um, I think OpenAI is the most straightforward, but you know, don't let me stop you if you want to use NVIDIA or something. Um, prompt in there. Um, the, 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 quest, the chat from the user can um, go via the prompt here. And we speak to GPT-4 or Mini. I think that's fine. And this is it. We're good. We just need an output. So let's go back up here to outputs chat output, boom, look at that. And we'll just um, send it. Now we have it, it's done. Let's go to the playground and talk to it. Let's be like, summarize the paper for me. Um, and it's going to do exactly that, right? Because the user's question is summarize the paper, but the context comes from the PDF. And in just a few seconds, here we go. Um, look at that, the paper titled Attention is All You Need introduces the transformer, a novel neural network architecture design for sequence transduction tasks. Okay, so it's working, but what can we do with it? Let's have some fun. So we'll be like, okay, who wrote this? Was it OpenAI? Let's spell it properly, OpenAI. Um, let's see what they say. So it's going to again, um, query the PDF and give us an answer. The document you provided is a research paper authored by a team of researchers from Google Brain, Google Research. It was not written by OpenAI. Um, how did open AI use this? I wonder. So this requires some real time, like news information and context that it may not have. And again, using rag, you can get that. And the document you provided is the original paper titled attention is all you need, which introduces the transformer model. Open AI's models, including GP3 and later versions are based on the transformer architecture described in this paper. Fantastic. Therefore, open AI did not directly use the paper. Um, in, in the sense of implementing it as is, but they built upon the context. Incredible. We just chatted with a PDF. We, we got the data and it works. But maybe you're building a product. Maybe you want to turn this into a SaaS, a software as a service product, where anyone can upload any PDF and so on. How might you do that? Well, Langflow is for builders. So um, here, let's look at how we can now take this and put it in a product. So if we go here, close this, we click on this API button right here, right? Um, and now we get an endpoint that we can query with a token that we generate. You just click on generate token right there. Um, and you, if you go to the tweaks section, you can sort of see stuff. Chat input um, is here. So we can maybe even make it here like that. And if we go back to the curl, you can see this. So if you can change this input value to a user's query via fetch or something. And similarly, um, the file here, right? The path um, can be tweaked. And so you can, yes, yes, I know this. So you can come in here and change 
So this component is called chat input N9AF3. File is this one. And you can just change its input path to something you know. Um, and of course, this input path would be on your system where you upload files, etc. Um, this isn't a lesson on deploying software, but all that to say, you get a network endpoint that you can call with any input parameters, including the file, the PDF, and the chat input. So you could realistically turn this into a product. It's been five minutes. We didn't only chat with a PDF using Langflow. We started to build a product with it. That's the power of data stacks Langflow. We'll leave it here. We can't wait to see what you build. Let us know. And in the next one, We'll go deeper into how you can not just chat with single file PDFs, but multiple PDFs, even books. Stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one.